graduate students know something about problem solving that undergrads don't. So in this video, we're going to talk about what that is and why it's important. But first, I want to take a look at the problem we're going to be analyzing. Suppose you are a doctor and you have 10 patients and each patient has one of six different diseases. Now your job is going to be to diagnose these patients to figure out which diseases they have. And to help you, you have a, basically a portfolio of reference cases that kind of match the disease to certain symptoms that the patient might be having. You can also order diagnostic tests, which can further narrow down um, the disease. The goal here is to diagnose these 10 patients as accurately as possible while using the fewest number of diagnostic tests. This was the question that was given to a bunch of students. Some of them were undergrads and some of them were graduate students and none of them had any kind of medical background. So they didn't walk in knowing any kind of prior knowledge about the diseases at all. I think actually the diseases were made up, uh, but I'd have to double check. Now, the first question you might have is, which group did better? So which group performed more accurate diagnoses? And the answer is that uh, they, did, they did about the same. The grad students, I think, got 94% uh, of their diagnoses correct, and the undergrads got something like 90% of their diagnoses correct. Um, and I don't think that this difference was uh, statistically significant at all. If there's no difference in accuracy, then uh, why am I making this video? Well, it turns out that the more important question is about how undergrads and graduates solve the problem differently. Okay, so for this question, we're going to go to this graph over here. Now, on this graph, you're going to see a bunch of dots. Every dot represents a diagnosis. So when someone uh, made a diagnosis of a patient, we're gonna put a dot on this graph. And the x-axis is time. There are 10 patients. We start off diagnosing. The first, the first patient's diagnosis will be the first dot that you see on a line. There are two lines of dots as well. Now, the top line represents the typical pattern for an undergrad. And the bottom line represents the typical pattern for a graduate student. There's a couple of important things to notice here. The first thing is that both groups, both the undergrad student and the grad student I have here, they improved the speed at which they made diagnoses over time. So you can see like in the beginning, the spaces between the dots, that's the time between the diagnoses, was larger than at the end. So that makes sense, or I hope it makes sense to you, that you get better at something as you practice it over time. So even within just 10 cases, they're making improvements at the speed at which they are eliminating diseases and trying to figure out which disease is the right one. But there's something really odd about the grad student pattern. Uh, if you look at the beginning, the grad student doesn't make any diagnoses for quite some time. So the undergrad student has already diagnosed two patients before the grad student has even diagnosed one. What are they doing? Are they, just, are they just chilling? Are they just sitting there? No. The answer to what they're doing during this time period is the key to understanding what grad students are doing differently. Grad students spent more time organizing the information in the beginning. Specifically, they made representations. They took all of that stuff, all that data, all that information that they have in the portfolio of previous cases, and they created a representation to help themselves diagnose the cases later on. For this particular problem, they tended to make things that looked like uh, tree diagrams or matrices, anything that helpfully matched symptoms to diseases. In other words, they made a decision-making tool, a tool that they could put to use in every case that they diagnosed. As a side benefit, grad students ended up using fewer diagnostic tests than undergrad students. Now, what undergrad students were doing, they'd see the new case, they'd look at the new case, they'd look through the portfolio of cases that they have, they'd try to match, and then they'd make the diagnosis, and then they'd do that over and over again. So undergrad students are not making these representations nearly at the same rates that grad students are. So even though grad students weren't that much more accurate than undergrads, they were more cost effective 
which, I mean, that would matter if this was an actual hospital in a real life scenario and diagnostic tests actually cost money. The other interesting part of this is that grad students didn't stop at just creating the tool. It's not like they made a single representation and then they're done and then they just apply it over and over and over again. No, what they did is they made a representation and then they made a diagnosis using that representation or using that tool. And then they thought about, well, how can I make the tool better? for what I want it to do. So in the beginning, some grad students, they made a list of the symptoms and the diseases. As they were going through using this list in the first couple of cases, they would realize, well, using this list is not very effective. I could make a tree and that would make my uh, diagnosis much, much faster. So then they transformed the representation that they originally made and they made something better. So the representations improve over time as well as you use them and as they modify them and improve them. Now, I want to mention a, a couple of interesting points before I end this video. One way of looking at this is the, like, grad students, great, they make representations, undergrad students, bad, they don't make representations. And that's not really what the study is about because the value of making the representation depends on how many cases you're going to do. Right? If you're only going to do two or three cases, then get that undergrad in there. That undergrad's going to get right to it and actually finish the job a lot faster. But if you are going to diagnose like 100 cases, well, then the representation that the grad student creates is going to be much more effective at doing that. And so in the long run, you're going to be much better off kind of having the grad student diagnose those 100 cases. And there's evidence from other studies that grad students don't tend to even think about that. I mean, no one thinks about this cost-benefit analysis. It's not as though you sit down and you're like, well, making a representation is going to take up, you know, 15 minutes. And then I estimate that, you know, that's going to shave 30% off of every diagnosis after five diagnoses. What is going on here is that the grad students have gotten into a habit. They've gotten into the habit of making representations of data. Because all none of the students have any medical background, this is something that's coming from uh, probably the grad students' other experiences, maybe with their own research projects, wrangling their own data. And so what you're seeing here is a kind of, a kind of transfer. It's a kind of transference of uh, a skill that grad students had learned in, within their own disciplines and now being applied to kind of the medical diagnosis area. Even though the medical diagnosis task is new to these students, the process of um, organizing data and creating representational tools, that part seems to be shared among both the disciplines that they're in and this medical task. I think one of the big takeaways here is don't underestimate the value of organizing what you know. A small investment now can reap big rewards later. <laughs> I'm sounding like a salesman. <laughs> Buy early in the representational stock and you're gonna, you know, things are gonna be great for you. There is something that doesn't require organizing data though, and that is clicking the like button on this video. So if you could just click that like button, I would really appreciate it. All right, thanks everyone, I'll see you next time. Graduate students know something about problem solving. I don't even have my mic on. I don't even, I don't even have my mic on, bro. How am I gonna record a video without my mic on, bro? I'm not.